Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out. I'm Dan Maloney, and I'm uh, privileged to serve as your zoo director. Uh, I'd like to um, thank and welcome Mayor Fisher for, for being here this morning. Thank you, Mayor. I know you, I know you got a busy schedule. Uh, we have the uh, Deputy Chief of Staff, Dalinger, is here in the back. Hey, Katie, thank you for being here. Uh, future healers, all you guys uh, coming out, thank you, young people, for, for being here with us. And Chris, of course, uh, always good to see you. We have Dr. Jones and Dr. Miller here as well. And all the other, uh, all the other esteemed guests, uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, the zoo team that's here, and of course, behind me, we have Teak and Bella and Amber, who have uh, who've graciously welcomed us into their, their home here at the Islands exhibit. Islands was, a, was uh, one of the, and still is, a pioneering landmark exhibit, giving animals the opportunity to be rotated through spaces, to go into all different uh, areas, and to have incredible variety and uh, choice in their lives. Uh, today, we're celebrating a project and a program that we think is just as landmark and just as pioneering. And we're hoping other zoos will, uh, will take, uh, take note and follow our lead. Uh, we here are privileged to be able to make our passion our careers. Uh, we see every day the incredible um, restorative ability of nature, of wild places and wildlife. Uh, we know that there's a flip side to that. We know that there's a tremendous, awesome fury to nature, and we think of the people, and we'll keep them in our hearts and prayers uh, in Western Kentucky. But for every one of those occurrences, there's, uh, there are hundreds more examples of what nature can do to, uh, to it's hard to not get upstaged by, a, by an orang. Um, Hello, sweetie. <laughs> Hello, baby. Amber, uh, Amber has a fascination with people's fingers. Uh, and mine are always in such bad shape that I think she was trying to tell me that a manicure is, is definitely in my future. Uh, nature has uh, tremendous restorative abilities. We know that. We see that every day. Uh, we know that nature, give, it, give nature half a chance and it'll come back. There's a resiliency there. There's a lesson for us to learn for people who've gone through uh, trauma and uh, other challenges in their lives. We've seen in the last two years for people coming out here during the pandemic looking for a place where they can connect with a natural space and to be able to, to view wildlife. The work that we've done here at the Zoo for Conservation with black-footed ferrets, an animal that when I was the age of these young people here was thought to probably be extinct. Well, the Louisville Zoo has, has produced the second uh, most number of uh, black-footed ferrets to be released back into the wild. This is the only ferret native to North America and maybe the most handsome of that family, of the weasels and, and, uh, and badgers and all those, and wolverines. Um, we also look to what we can do locally and work to regional conservation. So as we look at this Future Healers Got Zoo Buddies program, we're so proud of it. I'd like to recognize Steve Taylor, our assistant director. Steve has been the point person on this. Kim Allgaier, who is our curator of education and conservation, and Kyle Shepard, who uh, is in charge of PR here and works in marketing. They've all been so instrumental in making this program work the way it is. And so we're looking forward to these people getting a chance to come out, enjoy the zoo in a way that others may not be able to do, all kinds of special behind the scenes experiences, helping make animal diets, getting to meet the animals up close and personal, and getting a chance to have some really special attention from our staff. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mayor Fisher, let him know that this program is about education, it's about inclusion, it's about engagement, and it's a chance to, uh, to build our community and be the safest, most inclusive, most engaging uh, venue in, in Louisville. So without uh, further ado, Mayor Fisher. Thank you, Mayor, for being here. All right, good morning, everybody. Is this one of the all-time best settings for a press conference I think we've had here? It's, a, it's really great. Uh, it is really great uh, to be here at the Louisville Zoo. You love the headlines that come out of the zoo. Most recently, a penguin hatchlings and the first East African crowned crane chick makes everybody smile when they read these. And 
Today's headline is about humans and animals and a really great new partnership that you're hearing about that expands upon the zoo's mission of bettering the bond between people and planet. And Dan has just outlined Future Healers got Zoo Buddies, which brings together, I think, two forces of nature. One is Christopher Tuax. Chris, I really want to thank you for everything that you've done in the community for decades with us and just the constant creativity that you have to help our kids in the community. All the efforts that he puts to bring people together and heal the community. And of course, the other force of nature is the power of the animal kingdom, which we all love and appreciate each and every day. Uh, we got a great zoo here, and we're really proud of them and this site and what this will promise to be a world-changing program for the children involved and maybe even the world itself. I know people from all over the world are going to be looking at this and saying, this is really interesting. You know, how can we replicate this in our own community? So we always like to be the best in the world when we can. Future Healers got Zoo Buddies will build upon the understanding and the, and the connections that just seems to be natural between humans and animals and the environment. Sometimes we humans forget that we are animals too. It's only been in the last several hundred years where we've kind of come into this place where we're doing what they were doing before. So we're all one. And the children build upon that foundation through camp experiences, behind the scenes opportunities, and educational programs. And it really can't be stressed how important these type of relationships are for our kids like those that are, affect, or, um, are chosen for this program who've been affected by trauma. Uh, adverse childhood experiences really can have a negative impact for the whole life of a person if they're not dealt with. So the more we can help with that, and in this case, show how animals can serve as teachers and connectors as almost no other living, living beings can is a really great opportunity for us. Now, if you've been following the news, You've seen reports about the widespread emotional and mental health challenges being felt by young people in our community and all across America. Uh, the pandemic has certainly been a big contributor to that. Violence can be another contributor as well. So you put all that together, we need new solutions. And future healers here at our zoo are one of those solutions. I think we have a natural connection with animals. And I found a passage that explains their healing benefits, what I thought in a very plain type of way. And it's just something simple. The passage is, animals are such agreeable friends. They ask no questions. They pass no criticism. That wouldn't it be nice if everybody was that way? <laughs> but we can come to the zoo and hang out with them and uh, feel better about ourselves and our connections. So, Chris uh, 2X is building upon the great beginnings of this Future Healers program with this important and unique second step, thanks to the partnership at the zoo. Steve Taylor and I have talked about this program and his excitement about it. And Steve's been around the zoo world for quite some time. And I think it's safe I can share that you're saying this is one of the most exciting programs that you've ever been participating, which I think says a lot for somebody that's been in the zoo world for over four decades. So, Steve, thank you so much. And Dan, for you, just saying this is a no-brainer, uh, something that you can do and really embrace. And then Katie Dalinger, thank you as well as our deputy chief for everybody just saying, yeah, let's just make this happen as soon as we can. So for children who've been impacted by trauma and violence, this is going to be a beautiful and rewarding experience and something that we're all going to enjoy watching and being part of. I see we've got some of the board members from Game Changers as well. Thank you all for the support that you're giving the community. So thanks again. And U of L, U of L Health have been awesome partners uh, with Christopher 2X that have been always saying, okay, how can we explore different ways to bring kids along? Chris is really focusing on the youngest kids to try to change the culture that we have in the community where kids are naturally saying, I want to be a peacemaker, I want to be a game changer. And U of L Health has been with them every step of the way as well. So it's really impressive. And I'd like to thank Dr. Christopher Jones and Dr. Keith Miller with U of L Health for being such great leaders for our community as well. Gentlemen.
Oh, this is a fantastic place. I've got some fellow redheads back here, uh, so that's good. I used to actually be a redhead a long time ago, uh, several several nights ago, but uh, it's it's fantastic to be here. You know, as a trauma surgeon, we see a lot of the tragedy and heartbreak that happens in our community, and future healers uh, are absolutely a reason for hope and optimism, and we're so excited to be part of that program. Future Healers is about personal safety, health, well-being, opportunity. The zoo leg of this beautiful partnership uh, focuses uh, uh, more on taking children out of their everyday lives and bringing them to a place that's therapeutic, peaceful, relaxing, developing those connections with animals, taking them out of potentially some of the barriers and challenges that they may see on a daily basis. So they're beautifully complementary, the partnership between this, and we're so excited uh, to share this partnership with the zoo, and we thank you all so much for putting all the effort into it, and thank you, Mayor, for your support, and obviously our partnership with Chris we're very thankful for. So I'm going to bring up Dr. Jones real quick, and he'll say a few things, and then you'll be done listening to us. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, first of all, I just want to say um, uh, thank you to the mayor um, for supporting uh, this type of a program. I want to also just give a shout out to the zoo. I mean, this was huge. We'd really talked about it, uh, 2X and the rest of us, about, you know, kind of branching out a little bit and doing something um, that might be different. And when you talk to 2X about that sort of thing, you have to be careful because he thinks way out of the box at times. <laughs> and this is one of those things where I think people, you know, wonder like how could the zoo really help with our future healers and um, as Dr. Miller has said this is a very complimentary program um, this will only add to <laughs> this will only add to um, what we're trying to do with them um, on the medical side uh, of things um, I've been involved with uh, future healers for a couple of years now and it's been um, a, a a wonderful organization. It's because it was organic. This wasn't something that was contrived, but this was something that was organic um, that just kind of sprouted up from our medical students and from um, 2X and um, the University of Louisville. And I think it just all kind of meshed and welded together uh, very well such that we could have the program that we have here now. I think we have something like 50 or 60 people. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, yeah you know, I'm um, involved with the program now. And I think just getting the word out, this is something that's very different, something very good and it's all for our young people that's here okay and that's what we want to do we want to continue to educate we want them to grow uh, in multiple different ways uh, and the zoo is one piece of that and so for that I just want to say uh, thank you again and we appreciate this opportunity Thanks, mayor <clears throat> excuse me Dan um, and Dan you know how I feel about your whole team uh, Stephen Kyle Kelly <clears throat> Kim Algeyer, who's here, <clears throat> excuse me, the curator of education, much thanks. What I'd quickly like to do is just take you all through a, a quick journey. Uh, this journey has been going on for three months, you know, under the radar, per se. Uh, every now and then we would put some images out on social media, just giving little hints, not totally telling the story, but the story's being at least um, put on the front burner today. And again, we can't thank the mayor for his great support for this. Um, and again, Dan Maloney coming to town and right off the bat, just loving what the idea and the vision was here. So at the end of the day, Stephen Taylor, like the mayor said, decades at the zoo. And when he approached me at the end of September, right before myself, and Dr. Jones and Dr. Miller went to Capitol Hill to talk about future healers and secondary trauma on kids. When we got back, when we was there in Washington, we were talking about this exciting, exciting zoo uh, meeting. I thought when I came back, it was gonna be about a 30 minute deal. It ended up an hour, who knows, hour and a half. And I knew then that this was something that the zoo was really in on as it related to the healers. And like Stephen kept reminding me that the kids are the stars, and they are. So I'd like to just, just recap something real quick as it relates to what the mayor and then uh, Dan talked about and then Dr. Miller and Dr. Jones. Um, it starts with kids, this storyline, 
which is 50 healers now. It started with four in the summer of 2021. When we went to a surgical room at U of L Hospital, when I asked Dr. Miller, could we get a surgical room because we had our title, we had announced the intent in February of 21, and we needed an image to project to the public about what the healers would look like. And then those healers went in that room with the trauma facility dog, Rue, who goes to patient's room at U of L Hospital to cheer them up especially those impacted by reckless gunplay. And that imagery projected, and then our partners at Outfront Media and Mike Sheehy, who's here today, and you guys are gonna hear from him, with Dan here in a few seconds, lastly. They said, let's get the image out there on the digital boards. And that's what really started the whole avalanche of parents and children saying, guess what? We've seen black kids in great spaces, educational settings, arts and entertainment, sports, of course. This is kind of the first time that we see this picture of kids in scrubs and stethoscopes in the medical arena that projects hope. So we started our own narrative, meaning if you're gonna hurt people out here with reckless gunplay, we're not saying that we can sh stop shootings. That's not their job. But we're going to hit back with a narrative to say we're about healing and we have a presence of healing. And so the Sedgeway is simple. The kids come from the medical arena into now the animal kingdom, which in both spaces creates humanitarian advocates that we're going to be encouraging them to be. Equally at the same time, Steven Taylor had another wonderful idea when I was picking his brain about something. And that's another story coming down the pike. And it's about planet savers. Let's encourage the kids to be planet savers. So not only the 50 healers will be a part of the zoo family, but it's gonna be expanded. And you all will hear about that in the coming weeks where others in the community through our efforts will be touched also in being a part of the zoo family. And I will say this, their leader now, as it relates respectfully at the zoo, Kim Algeyer, who's in the back, she met with the parents several weeks ago with the kiddos for the first introduction. And it was magic, and we predicted it would be magic. And that's the beautiful thing, lastly, about Future Healers. It's a parent buy-in. Without a parent buy-in, we cannot be successful. So we want to thank all the parents back in the room who represent the parents that are not here. And thank you all for your sacrifice. Because <laughs> without y'all, we can't do this. And I'll end on my notes with this. That just like in the summer of 2021, we needed an image to be projected to start, you know, our whole storyline. Kyle has... Uh, Kyle Shepard has documented some just wonderful photos. You see some of them on display in here. She has video that she's going to be releasing to you guys uh, as it relates to some things that have been done over the last three months. The Future Healers Project with the 17 specifically, and we'll be crystal clear about this, those 17 were plucked out of the 50 because the zoo is going to follow them for the next year and document their story with them. So this can be, like Dan said when he came, something he can pitch to other zoos as an example of kids connected to the medical arena and now in the animal kingdom, and they get to deal with two different anatomy scenarios. One with humans, one with animals because they're gonna be exposed to the animal hospital here in veterinarians. This is beautiful, and the message that we want to send is loud and clear. We have a lot of invisible children, per se, in Jefferson County. And that's not by anybody's fault in this room. That people just hurt people by being reckless with gunplay. And we have secondary trauma kids who never get hit by bullets. Some of them are in the room right now. And what we're going to do is use the zoo as a healing bomb for them. And Dan, I'll bring you and Mike up, but I do want to show you all this. This is the memento they'll take away today. This is the digital boards that Mike Sheehy's going to talk about going up around town. 
And these miniature uh, example boards or mementos will be given to the kids to let them know that we're well on our way. I think that's enough said. Thank you all so much. We can't uh, wait to get ready to roll with Kim Algeyer and a whole, uh, her whole education team. This is going to be uh, something that hopefully you all will follow from time to time. And I would encourage for you all to get back with Kyle Shepard and maybe in the future set up a conversation with Kim about what is her goals with her education team at the zoo to try to pull from this hand and glove relationship with the healers and uh, the Louisville Zoo. Thank you all so much. I've known Chris a long time, and it's always, whenever I get a text from Chris saying I need to talk, I know there's going to be something interesting in conversation, but typically it's something that's very positive for our community, whether it's game changers or now the future healers. Uh, you know, when he called about his partnership with UFL, I thought this is awesome. And then, of course, when he tracked me down around the holidays about, about this new initiative with the zoo, it's just phenomenal. Um, so... What we've got um, out front is donating five digital spots. I've got maps if anybody wants to know where they are. The one that's probably best for any photo opportunities is down in the convention center at Market and 2nd Street. So, But again, we're very excited to be a partner with, uh, with this initiative. And each day there's going to be 7,000 spots running. So you should see one somewhere. And Mike, thank you for your commitment to the zoo. He's a former uh, zoo board member. Thank you.